Today I'm going to show you how to make this boring sconce into a smart sconce. All right, so today we're going to make this sconce smart. So to do this, we're going to use a Shelly Dimmer 2. You could use alternatives, which are less expensive. This is $38 for everything. One of the disadvantages of the Shelly, uh, Shelly Dimmer 2 is that um, the way you dim or brighten things is, it's, uh, is you hook it up to a push button switch. So one button for up, one button for down. And um, it's clearly better to have a rotary switch for this, which is uh, one of the reasons why this sconce has a built-in analog rotary switch with this uh, nice, uh, satisfying click. Unfortunately, the click is going away. We're going to be um, replacing the click with uh, uh, a rotary encoder switch. Um, however, in, in all the ways, this thing is going to maintain functionality. So, um, since the Shelly, Shelly Dimmer 2 is not designed to have a rotary switch, we have to modify the software. So, we'll get right into it. So, we're definitely going to need to uh, flash this, and we're going to be flashing it to Tasmoda because uh, I know how to use Tasmoda. If you're going to start flashing these, um, you probably ought to just buy one of these. Uh, this is a USB to UART, uh, basically the serial adapter. I think I got this for less than $10. Um, the, um, uh, the problem is that the, uh, the pins on here are actually significantly smaller than the pin, uh, the, these standardized pins, which are called DuPont cabling. So you will have to make an adapter, and in fact, I have. However, for this particular uh, flash, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use this thing here, which I forgot what this is called. Uh, maybe I'll link it down below, uh, but it's uh, designed specifically for um, Shelly devices and it's been working for every Shelly device that uses these tiny pins um, for the last four or five years. So apparently they're not going to change. So we're going to be flashing our Shelly 2 dimmer to Tans Tasmoda. So, um, yeah, on, um, on this website, which I believe is related to Tasmoda, they <laughs> tell you how to do that. Um, uh, the long story short of it is that you just need to, of course, uh, hook up your USB to serial to the appropriate uh, pinout here. Um, you know, the, like I said, I, I bought a cheater one that's specifically for Shelly's. Um, technically, you only need uh, four pins. You need the uh, 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 TX, RX, 3.3 uh, volts, and a ground. I remember that TX and RX are reversed because um, one one uh, device's transmit is another's receive. Once you get all that hooked up and plug it in, um, I'm using uh, Windows here. Um, you can actually just go to Tesmoda's install page, and uh, I'm using Brave browser, but I suspect it works in most browsers, including Chrome. Um, we'll actually tap into it. Um, so in my case, this is my. Uh, uh, the, the, this is my uh, USB to serial, so I'm going to connect, and sometimes I have to connect twice with this particular thing. Uh, connect again, and then now I can click to, uh, uh, install. I'm going to erase device, and it is slowly doing it. So once you've finished flashing, you're going to need to configure your uh, Wi-Fi. And so if you have this fancy controller, you'll have this option to change it directly, which is pretty sweet. Alternatively, um, the Tesmoda configuration is going to give off a Wi-Fi access point that you're going to need to access with your phone and enter your uh, login and password for that. Um, and uh, it, it should just pop up, but um, if it doesn't, just navigate a web browser once you've connected to the Wi-Fi. Uh, to 192.168.4.1 and then you'll be able to change it. Once you've navigated to the uh, Tesmoda in your web browser, um, it's going to be important that you just add one more additional upgrade so that way it can um, have the dimming functionality. Well, honestly, just use the whole circuit. Um, and so you're going to have to navigate um, to this website. I'll put a link down below, which is Google Shelly 2 Dimmer Tesmoda and then kind of click on the uh, STM32 release and then download this bin file here. Um, should be pretty small. Um, you're gonna have to put it on your hard drive and then you're gonna be uploading it here in a second. Um, so once again just navigate back, click firmware upgrade, choose file, um, 
Um, then go ahead and, uh, of course, find the file we just downloaded. And then hit Start Upgrade. Um, now, you might actually have to do this twice, basically upgrade, uh, upgrade it twice. Um, but that should get everything working for you as expected. So you can see it did it properly because now you have um, more monitoring options right here. So once I've done that, um, I'm actually going to uh, use this uh, what's called template to configure it. Um, so this nice poster uh, managed to figure out a, a, a kind of a, a, an optimal uh, setting for what's called the GPIO pins. Um, so I'm going to go into configuration and then um, other, and then I'm going to copy paste that in and click activate and just save. And this is not uncommon. And when it comes up, as you can see, now it's got all the uh, uh, all the little features. That so uh, now we just have to hook everything up. So the first thing you're going to want to do is um, get out the rotary switch. Uh, but on most of these, including this one, they'll have it glued in there. Um, and so you'll need to pry it off very gently without scuffing it. So then it won't be wipe approved and um, that one came right up so that wasn't on in any serious way but you're going to want to save this um, hopefully it's the same standard size as on, is on your new replacement rotary switch the next thing is you're going to need to unscrew that little nut here all right uh, wow this one was well, the last one was glued in, apparently not this one. So I'm gonna actually save this washer and the old nut. And I am trying this year to be less of a hoarder. So I'm actually gonna throw away this rotary switch in the garbage. So I'm actually gonna cut uh, the wires here. And so this is nice because in this particular case, they're color coded. All right, so how is this going to be wired? So the the wire going to the uh, uh, the, the bulb itself, the hot wire, is going to go into O. Um, the neutral is going to go into neutral. But of course, you want um, uh, the neutral for the bulb uh, uh, in, in parallel. So that goes into N here. Uh, the load going into the sconce um, will, I think it could go into any one of these, but I just always choose the middle one. Uh, but I, I think they're all wired into parallel. And next you're actually going to hook up your little rotor, uh, rotary encoder. So you actually only need four pins on this. Well, you might only need three. Um, you need a clockwise, a counterclockwise, and a ground. But also, this little rotary thing has got a little trick up its sleeve. It's got a button switch where if you push on it, um, it'll activate. Um, uh, it, well, it, it, it's a momentary switch. So in this case, we're going to have GPIO0 hooked up to SW. Um, so uh, you might notice that they aren't enough, there aren't enough pins on this thing. So where do they all go? So um, the clockwise and uh, uh, DT... Um, goes into switch one and switch two. Um, if you don't like uh, that uh, clockwise turns it bright or, or, or uh, um, that it turns it down, basically if you, if you have the clockwise and counterclockwise mixed up, you can actually very easily switch that in software. So it actually doesn't matter which one you hook these up to, you can change it later. Um, but uh, the uh, switch we want on GPIO zero, which is actually on this other side and the ground as well. So ground, uh, if you're holding the dimmer this way, uh, is on the bottom here, and then the next one up is GPIO zero. So yes, you are going to have um, wires coming out of this blue end here, and then two coming out of here. So how are you going to do that? Unfortunately, um, you're going to have to use some tape and some ingenuity, perhaps even some, uh, some hot glue. So 
Another problem is that these pins are extraordinarily tiny, so um, you need to find a wire that will actually fit. So in this particular case, I have um, some leftover electronic components from an Alibaba impulse buy uh, from many years ago. So this will fit just nicely, this little capacitor thing. Um, so I'm just gonna sacrifice the capacitor part of this. I guess I could save it um, um, and just use the wire. And then I'm going to solder in uh, some DuPont cabling. So we're going to sacrifice two DuPont cables in this uh, in this case. So they are very very inexpensive. So by doing it this way, you will have you won't have color coding. So you'll have to use your Mark One eyeball in order to see that you're doing it right. But um, now I have four pins as you can see here. So two of them are going to go into the switches here, and two of them are going to be soldered into there. But I'm actually going to tin all of them. All right, so this first part's really easy. I'm just going to tin these. child in about five minutes. That's for this. I'm going to cut off the excess from over here. So, as you can see, they are very close together. So, that is just itching for a fault. So, what we're going to do is we are going to separate them out. So, I just need some cardboard here. I'll make a little outline. This is actually kind of like thick paper. Okay. All right, so just fitting the uh, paper around the leads there, separating them out so they don't touch. I'm going to put some hot glue on, and you got to hold it there burning your fingers the whole time. Very important that uh, second degree burns sustained during the construction of this project. I'm um, putting some electrical tape down. I have red electrical tape which does in fact make it work better. Um, just plugging in the rotary encoder and then putting the rotary encoder in. Um, you didn't see it but I put um, the nut and the washer in there to space it out a little bit to make the length of the knob proper. Putting in the old knob now we're doing a little test. So um, as you can see, it's not super responsive. So you have to set the dimmer settings um, to the proper range. Um, also, this push button feature, um, you kind of have to enable through software a little bit. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And so the first things first is I actually disconnect the button entirely from uh, the template. So um, just set the button to number two over here. Um, also, you see that rotary A and B, if you don't like counterclockwise versus clockwise, you can um, change them out here. Just hit save. All right, so now the button press does absolutely nothing. So you're going to make a couple of um, rules here in Tesmoda. So you can look up how to do the syntax, but I'll show you how to do, at the very least, this. So type in rule one on power one pound state equals one. So when the power turns on, I'm going to set the dimming setting to 100%. I later changed it to 80. And so you have to and now enable that rule. So now whenever it turns on, no matter what the previous dimming setting, it'll turn it to 100%. Now I'm going to make rule two. So on switch two, because remember we changed the button to number two. 
So on switch two pound state. So anytime to change a state, do power one off and on. And then you have to enable rule two. And that's it for uh, that. However, you're probably also going to want to change the dimmer settings. So the light basically doesn't work with the dimmer setting of about 20% or less. So I'm going to change the range. I do this by typing dimmer range 20 comma 100. So that means the range is now going to start at 20 and go to 100. That's it.